Hello and welcome. If you found this video uh, from not my channel, then you're here because of the title, and the title will probably be something like Learning as we play how to play a Crusader Kings 2 Republic. And let's go through the game setup quickly first. Uh, I'm running Crusader Kings with all DLC except for one, so your experience if you're playing just the free version might differ a little bit. And when you click on new game in the loading screen, once you are in the main menu, you get to select from these eras here. I like to start in the early Middle Ages, which is very fun. We're going to ignore all these people. Instead, we click on custom game setup. And over here are the republics that currently exist and which you could play as, which is Ragusa, which I believe is somewhere down here. Uh, Amalfi, which is somewhere over here on this coast there and uh, Venice of course which is also here but also all over the place. Uh, I believe Venice is the only one that is actually independent, all the others are part of a larger empire such as Amalfi is I think part of the Byzantines, Ragusa is part of Lombardy or something like that. Um, we'll check through these and I don't really see all that much difference between them. I think we're going to play as Venice. It's just a little bit standard. And um right. I think if I click on play do I not get my options here? <laughs> um these here with a little circle around are going to be your recommended uh expansions. Others you can turn off. Uh, to play a Republic, you are highly recommended to get the Republic DLC as well. Uh, otherwise, everything that's here. Personally, I like um, uh, the, the, the Republic, Sons of Abram, uh, Way of Life. This one is the most important one for me, actually. Uh, Reapers 2, which is very fun. And Holy Fury, which is just also kind of fun. So... They changed the menu a little bit, so if I click on play, you get this uh, option screen here. And I do recommend playing on iron mode. You could play on not iron mode, but it's uh, pretty fun. If you have Sunset Invasion, turn it off. Doesn't matter. Uh, play like that. Uh, there are some more options down here to deal with and play around with. Uh, there's only really one option I think is pretty important, and I always forget where exactly it is over here. It's called Interfaith Marriages and you can switch it to open but that disables your uh, achievements. But I think turning that in a different direction can be very fun. So you are free to marry outside of your own religion. All right, let's start this as Galbayo and we will play in the cloud, start Iron Man. Now the most important thing to remember here is the first screen you can kind of ignore. I mean, if you want, read on it if you play it for the absolute first time. Uh, but this one is where it's usually at. You want to know which are my cultural special features, which we're Italian, there are no special features to be Italian. Um, we are a patrician, which has a lot of very interesting features. We're going to read through those in a moment. Catholicism, it has a bunch of interesting features, but they're not uh, our main focus right now. We might get into them a little later. For now, we learn that we can hold trade poles, cities, castles, palaces, forts and hospitals without a penalty. We can hold tribal holdings without penalties for counties with our culture, which is important. We can build castle cities, temples, forts and hospitals. Matrilineal marriages are not allowed, also very important. Uh, we cannot imprison subjects without a special reason, cannot revoke titles without reason, cannot revoke titles from tribal. No, we can revoke titles from tribal, okay. Can't usurp kingdoms or empires, also quite interesting. No gender law succession, also interesting because that means we will always be locked in the succession law of the Republic, which is very interesting and different from everything else. We can move our capital within the same lifetime every six and a month. That's pretty much standard. Landed characters cannot inherit. Very important point. If you want to put someone out of inheritance, land them. Um, we can't grant kingdoms and empires to characters with a government from a different group. 
Not entirely sure what that means because different group could mean quite a bit of things. Group, religious, uh, cultural, um, leadership system, that's not super clear. Must pay the bride price for a marriage with a noblewoman. I, I'm not entirely sure what that means because I haven't played Republic actually. I've played once. For a few hours or so, and then I recognized that the recordings uh, that I was doing to do exactly this were all broken up, so uh, that's all I know about playing Republics. It's very limited. First things, press the W key or click on this down here to get a better view. This is what I usually play as to see who's independent, who's where. As you can see, we are Venice and we are just Venice, the artificial island of Venice. Um, but if you look over here, you might see I don't have this on the quick buttons because playing as a Merchant Republic, this view is much more interesting. You don't see all that much right now, except if you go over here, um, because the trade routes and the trading zones, well, the trade routes are the only trading zones already ex in existence. There are trading zones which we will contribute to and create as time moves forward. Um, right, so one thing that I learned in my last playthrough, what I wanted to do immediately was capitalize on a trading zone that held one of the um, Silk Road trade posts because they get some special modifiers and earn a whole lot of more money than what you would get out here in your own areas. But trade zones that are directly connected to your capital trade zone also get some bonuses and going further away costs more to build trade posts. Trade posts, this is the main mechanic for us. We don't necessarily, we can, but we're not necessarily going to uh, grow our realm through conquest. You can, a lot of people probably do, but the reason we might become very powerful, influential and a force to be reckoned with is going to be money and money is generally generated through trade pools for a merchant republic. Now going back to this view over here, the trade zones view, um, you have these zones in the ocean. If you play a feudal lord or something similar, these only mean, okay, if you want to send your ship here, from there you have to go through this zone, to this zone, and then into your target zone. That's what they mean, mostly. But for, trade, yeah, for trading, for the Merchant Republics, these are the trading zones, basically. They also exist inland, I believe, but uh, trading zones are primarily something to set up on the coast. So all the... Merchant Republics that exist right now are pretty much concentrated in this general area. Amalfi is down here and somewhere over here is Ragusa, exactly. So we're going to be competing for this area here um, with our trading zones. So first things we want to do is we want to build a trade post as soon as we can. Um, if you're entirely new to Crusader Kings 2, I do highly recommend go play Tribal first. It, it's much more simple. Uh, there's a whole playlist here where we go from the tribal uh, pff, tribe over here uh, to forming basically the Holy Roman Empire. It's 110 episodes. It's a long thing, but it's worth a watch because I explain almost everything from top to bottom. I will go into a little bit of detail here as well but it might not be just as detailed as the other one so trade republic right so we want to build a trade post this is my first order of business but right now we don't have the money if we look on the tooltip we see uh we need a, to have a personal wealth of at least 84.42 gold we are at 69 gold and we are earning f uh, plus 573 there is some money going away, which I find interesting. So if we click on my, up on here, and we are, despite not being the vassal of anyone, we're losing money due to adults of our family at our court. And we have a son and another son. So these two are at our court, and they cost us money. But they don't just cost us money. Uh, also, what they do is they provide us 
trade post slots. So the more adult family members we have in our court, that's important. They, If they just exist, but are on the court and someone else's person, um, they're not going to count towards this. They allow us to build more trade posts. Right now, we are at um, one because our trade practices is so low with its technology that it's minus 66.7%. So we will have to work on trade practices here. Uh, this, this needs to go up. This is our main priority. We need the economy advances to go up. Um, to do that, we're going to utilize our friendo here. Uh, which one of you can do economy tech? This guy here. So, another thing, you might not want to put the other great families, and you can tell that they're a great family by these reddish ribbons on their brownish uh, crests. They do look different than all the other ones, but you might not want to have these here because being in a position like this pays the money. And you don't want the other families to be rich because uh, succession works in a certain way. Plus, he's terrible at what he does. So let's replace him with someone who's a little bit more competent. This guy, who is our son. Good stuff. So let's have him research economy tech. You might think that's not ideal. Let, it, let him collect taxes. 30% uh, local tax modifier. That's great. Agreed. However, it doesn't work out all that well. Uh, with the trade limit that we have right now. This this needs to go. We also need to build a trade post real quick as soon as we can. So I'm jumping a little bit between things because I want to get out of the way of the things that you need to do starting out, usually. One more thing we're going to talk about right now. We have covered trade posts a little bit. We haven't built one, so I can't really show you how they work exactly. But another thing we should talk about is succession in a merchant republic. Now, right now we have the information on we're going to lose the grand city of Venezia and the Republic of Venice to someone who's not our heir. That's an issue, of course. Now, in a feudal society or something similar, you would have succession laws over here, uh, which would probably be something like elective gavel kind or agonatic cognatic gavel kind or something like that. So someone out of your dynasty would just inherit pieces. Not everything, but pieces. Now in a republic, it works entirely different. You have the patrician elective, meaning through this tab here, the, the Republic tab, you are waging campaigns against your competitors. And the respect modifier determines who's going to be the new Grand Doge of the Merchant Republic you're playing at. So right now, this guy, the patrician Teodato of Orselio, has 2,936 respect. He's going to be the successor to the Grand Duchy, if we die. However, he's quite a bit older than we are, so he might die before us. But there are other people in the ranks waiting to uh, go ahead, and you see our heir, who we have poised to be the next Grand Doge. He has the least respect out of all of these. Now, how do we go about this? Of course, <laughs> and I figured that out early, Republic gameplay is all about the intrigue, at least if you play like me, where you take the very, very, very obvious route <laughs> to do things. Uh, because to me, the first idea was, of course, well, if I just kill all of these, <laughs> then there's someone new who's not going to have the same respect. You can see how respect is calculated by hovering over there, and it has an age factor, it has prestige and a campaign fund. A campaign fund is what we can do here as well. So we could put in uh, 10 gold, which is one click. We could shift click to go through 100. If we could uh, CTRL click, we just beat the best candidate. Um, so that's that's great. The, the, these are the options that we have right now. Um, let's check over him. So he has no campaign fund. I don't think anyone right now has a campaign fund going. So all of these are just age factor prestige. 
So obviously, if you look at him, his air is 29. Our air, by the way, I'm going back by pressing B for back, is 21. So he's younger still. Um, so if we killed him, his successor would still be garnering more respect than ours. But that's okay. We can just keep killing people. Uh, so now that we know how the succession in this works, and by the way, don't worry, if you lose the Grand Duchy, that mainly means that you lose income. Because uh, you are going to lose out on city tax and other things. Just some tax income is what you're going to lose. And of course, you don't get to declare wars or, you know, expand the realm through standard methods of crusader kings too. But you can just be one of the grand families, keep that going, and grow in the shadow. Uh, you, you could, of course, do that. And it's probably very likely that, at least that's what happened to me, and I assume it's pretty normal, that you are from time to time going to lose out uh, due to some unforeseen for circumstances. But as long as there is a male heir in your line of succession, your house is going to remain the same. Now, how does that work? Um, you're not going to hold any land because there's only Venice and it's the grand city of Venice, Venezia, of course, and we don't hold anything else. These are our vassals. We don't, we don't hold our land. So how do we exist without land? Well, that's because all the grand families in the Republic have their palace, which is not to be confused with the grand great work palace. Uh, which is the royal palace down here. That's a different thing. This is basically our home away from home. This exists in Venice, but it also doesn't really exist. Like, there's no tile in the county overview here which would show you the Grand Palace. For me, the fantasy of it is our Grand Palace is somewhere in the city of Venice. That's where it is. Um... But so are all the other ones, and you upgrade these through spending money, and they act as your county, and they are pretty strong. Um, they're also very expensive to upgrade, as you can tell here, the prices are insane for the very early starting date that we have. But still, we earn a whole lot of money for what we are. We have one county that's, that's minuscule, absolutely minuscule. Uh, we can check here. So we earn 5.73. Let's check uh, the Lombards. They are earning, well, about twice as much, but they are magnitudes larger than we are. So, um, militarily speaking, our main forces are going to be our own levies, which come from our palace. Like, these are all our personal palace guards. From, of course, our uh, vassals as far as they exist, but the retinue is a very important feature for merchant republics when it comes to military might. Good. So now we've talked about the basics, we know where we need to go, and this was important to, for, for me to get out of the way because all these decisions up here very much hinge on what you need to do. And what we need to do is kill a bunch of people. <laughs> so uh, we're going to start out with selecting these two. Uh, this one is from the Way of Light D Life DLC, and it gives you some flavor options to further um, adjust your character. So, we're pretty decent on Intrigue already. Um, seduction is way more powerful than Intrigue Focus, and I'm going to tell you why. This one gives us plus 5% plot power flat and plus 3 Intrigue. That's not bad. But you know what gives us even more plot power? A wife of someone we have seduced who is now our lover and who is very much going to be wanting to kill that guy. That's at least a 60% of something in our court. So seduction for me is, I think, the, the absolute primary trait that you want in a republic. Plus, as we just learned, male heirs are important. And since we are a good Catholic Christian, we can't have multiple wives, we don't have concubines, we don't have anything like that. But what we can do is legitimize a bunch of bastards. <laughs> is what we're going to do. So, um, if you maybe followed some of my monarch's journeys, 
uh, you might have seen a lot of very similar videos where I embarked on this and I just enjoy this focus so much. It's it's lovely. So we're going to say seduction for the reasons that I just outlined, which allows us to seduce female characters that are sort of within diplomatic reach, ideally in the same realm, because otherwise you're never going to get an option to, you know, seduce them. I mean, long distance relationships these days are not all that problematic anymore, but it was quite a bit, trend, uh, bit of a different uh, topic back then. Now, what we're going to do as well is we're going to select a uh, option up here. We could build a war chest, which I don't find all that interesting. Round Prosper might be okay. I'm not sure how we might become the king of Venice. How does that work? The Republic of Venice is de jour part of the kingdom of Venice. Which costs 397.2 gold to form. Do we have two duchy titles? No, we do not. We can't form it yet. All right, that's a that's a silly ambition. We're not going to do that. What we're going to do is we're going to try and make a friend. Because friends are very important. Especially if you want to kill a bunch of people. Right. Uh, then let's take care of the minor titles such as designated region. And again, don't put these guys in here. You might think, oh, but they're my vassals. Uh, my vassals should like me. That's important. Vassals liking me is an important thing. Otherwise, they're going to rebel and do terrible things to me. You're kind of right, but also not. Because these guys you want to hold down. You want to put these guys through their paces. They, they don't get to grow. Who you want in here are your heirs. Because that way they generate prestige. So another thing about um, your succession here, you get to freely choose who is going to be your heir. You just designate it. And you can change it at any point in time you want. So we're going to put in our lovely son Leon, who has a decent amount of stewardship, which is more important than all the other ones here. I would say my ranking is kind of intrigue, diplomacy, stewardship, and then the rest uh, for picking a leader for a merchant republic. So otherwise, good. State Inquisitor uh, charged security against both internal and external threats. These get a plus six opinion modifier, but they also get a salary and monthly prestige. So guess who's going to be that? State Inquisitor son number one, State Inquisitor son number two, and you know who else? Um, let's let's make it our court chaplain because he's not part of the whole uh, great family thing. So High Admiral, which is also monthly prestige and a lot of salary. That's not bad. We might want to put one of our sons in there instead. Uh, let's let's kick him out from that job. Give it to, I don't know, uh, this this mayor. He's not a grand mayor. Important. The patricians. Those are the ones you don't want to give titles to. Give it to barons. Give it to mayors. That's fine. You want those to like you. They they need to like you. So how High Admiral is going to be our direct son. Because it pays more prestige to be a High Admiral than a State Inquisitor. So these we dole out to those we want to pay taxes to us basically we're ignoring all these patrician families that there's just nothing going to happen or tutor uh someone who's good at intrigue i mean he's he's pretty good at many things right we have one patrician commander which we don't want so let's put this mayor in here he's not great at it but he doesn't need to be good he just needs to exist and um, kick out these guys. So let's check through these. I mean, they have some skills there, but oh, look at that. We have a 20 uh, intrigue man waiting in the wings here. So goodbye, boy. You are going to help us build a spy network at home, increasing our plot power to 10%, which is going to be very important Qu quite quickly. Let's see. He's very good, but we can replace him with our state inquisitor Juani. Juani, yes. So we'll put him here, our son, which is lovely. 
And he's just going to do what? Retinue man, yeah, we don't need that. Train troops, research military tech, suppress revolts. Arrest chance, plus 25. Well, then I never noticed that. That's good. That's really good. That's powerful. Ooh, arrest chance. Oh, that might be interesting. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Very good. We're going to instead go for levy size plus 50% because that's crazy. Uh, let's see. Can we get someone better here as well? Oh, yes, we can. Our oh, dear court tutor. That's fine. Again, they're going to hate us. But it doesn't matter to us. They can hate us all they want. That's fine. We don't want to empower them. I mean, maybe it's a bad idea. I don't know. We're learning together. This is a little bit different than all my other learning videos, but where I've already figured out everything about uh, horse lords and tribal and feudal and all that. Well, I haven't figured out all of it, but I figured out to a point where I play comfortably without fearing my own death. Now, what could we do with him? Convert stuff. I think we're going to increase our religious standing with the papacy. That's, that's a good job. And he will just go ahead and improve relations. I'm not entirely sure. Threat decay rate plus 15% we don't need. Let's have him improve relations with lords at home. So we have all our vassals. I mean, one of them is getting a little bit of wit feet, but it is Venice after all. I mean, the water isn't as high at this point in time as it is these days. But still, there's, there's a lot of canals. So this is very historically accurate. Right. Let's figure out all the last things here. And then we're going to make our first big brain play here. We've lost our uh, commander because we put our son up there to be our guy. And we can make him a commander too because that, you know, again, gives him monthly prestige. So we're going to push that man, push him to the limit. He doesn't have to lead troops. He can't lead troops. He's doing something else for me. So let's uh, set our crown focus to Venice. Very good stuff. Our heir is unmarried. That is, of course, uh, unacceptable. He's not going to be our heir for long, but let's find him. Let's find him someone. Oof, you know what? You know what we're going to do? Oh, arrange a marriage. Ah, sadly, that's not going to be a non aggression pact, but she's fine. Let's see, the other son is also unmarried for some reason. I'm just taking their young women. Th that's what I'm doing. I'm just taking their young women. That's all I am doing. You're going to see our true plans in just a moment. So all these are figured out, but what we are is also unmarried. Now, you might wonder, who should we get? <laughs> ah, there, there are many, many good options, of course. Um... But we're going to go for a very young one. For a young one who is going to give us a non-aggression pact with this guy. I'm not even sure if he's part of my realm. He is not. He is uh, part of Ragusa down there. Why am I going for a very young one? Because I will accumulate a bunch of lovers and I will uh, legitimize a whole bunch of kids. And she is only going to start getting upset at all of these once she is of age and married to me. So for the next 11 years, I am free to sire as many and legitimize as many bastards as I want without incurring a negative modifier with our wife. Of course, our kids are not going to look all that um, friendly on all that, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Okay, next, what last thing that we're going to do, because we want to be ahead of everyone else, is we're going to go over here, uh, check out our options there, and we're going to borrow some money. Which is going to lower Temple Vassal opinion by 10. Pfft, who cares, right? So we get this. And now what we're going to do is we're going to build a trade post. Right here at home. Before anyone else gets some weird ideas about that stuff. Right? Um, we're not going to build a hospital, though it is affordable for us. We're going to let the money occur and maybe pay back the Jews at some point. Who knows? Um, new important decision is available. We could compose a book as well. We might just do that. But first things first, more importantly, way more importantly, we're going to check our little 
realm. And we're going to lo we want, we want, we want women. And we just want all the women in our realm. So I'm not sure what Okay, she could be convinced to join our court for a bag of gold. Uh, she is already at our court, so she will be our first target of seduction. Let's put up some uh, things here. We could invite her for 15 gold. Let's see, is she good at all? It doesn't matter. We just want all the 16-year-olds. That's that's what we're going to do. All the 16-year-olds that, that are willing to come here, we're going to send four. So we give them a little bit of a gift. And then we invite them to court. That's all good. Now we're going to search everywhere and we're going to take our women filter, which I've created a long, 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 long time ago uh, in the Monarch's Journeys to do something similar here. And what I forgot now was to set a special focus so I remember who they are. And we're just going to invite every 16 year old in the world. That is what we're going to do. Every single, no, not every single one, but a whole lot of them. Because we want a whole lot of them. Uh, don't don't worry, we, we have more plans. Oh no, she is an important target. We have more plans. We're not just going to get a whole lot of 16 year olds. Maybe not the slow one. Uh, yeah, not, not her. She can be at court, but don't want her. She might, in you know, pass on the slowness there. Right, so we got a good bunch of options. Let's get the last 16 year olds we already got her invited to court there we go okay now we need a few more special targets there there are just a few more special targets to set okay this guy doesn't have a wife this guy doesn't have a wife no one has a wife okay so we have to let the game play a little bit until everyone marries and then we're going to set a few more special targets here you can by the way completely destroy a house but they're just going to be replaced by a new house so it's not all that sensible to do now we set everything up we need to be in a good position to start out playing as a republic and i'm curious to see how far we can get uh if i even figure out everything because the, the trade post thing is still a little bit of mystical to me there's a lot of open questions in, in my book um but that's fine for now we are in a good starting position and yeah we'll see how it goes on the next time so thank you for being here and see you around bye bye